Hello to all guys, gals, and non-binary pals. My name is Robin, also known as Heckin' Robin, on the wonderful world of the interwebs. I'm a trans guy from the UK, and the writer and story designer of Brownies and Brimstone, our short demonic visual novel created in two weeks for Rainbow Game Jam that was ranked first for narrative and second for art. I wanted to talk about my process of writing the over 10,000 word script for the game in the allotted two weeks, what I learned as a newish writer and game jammer, and hopefully make it seem more accessible to another noob out there considering making their own visual novel. So, starting with my experience real quick. I've been knuckling down and writing with a purpose, as I like to call it, since the middle of 2020. I picked up daily writing challenges as a way of channeling my creativity during a darker period of my life, and rediscovered the love of storytelling that I had as a kid, when I used to devour books like they were sweets and scribbled stories into my many, many notebooks. Rainbow Game Jam was the third game jam that I've participated in, and my biggest game jam game by a long way. Before this, I'd written an intro monologue for a cat with way too many western puns in it, and the diary entries for a wannabe scientist squid. So a full-blown visual novel slash dating sim was big for me. Because of this, I still consider myself a noob at writing and making game jam games, so please take what I say with a pinch of salt. And if anyone watching is either a fellow noob who finds this helpful, or a writing veteran with some feedback, I'd love to know what you think so I can continue to grow as a writer. Anyway, on to the process. And the most horrific part of it, in my opinion. Actually starting the damn thing. From what I've seen, you either have 10 ideas that you can't choose between, or you have no ideas and spend your time crying in front of your computer at a blank document page. Getting any words onto the page was personally my biggest challenge, and you'll see what I mean shortly. So, first of all, the beauty of a game jam is that there's generally a theme to help focus your direction. The theme for Rainbow Game Jam this year was liberation. And since the jam is about encouraging participants to create games exploring and celebrating identity, gender, sexuality, and so on, there were a lot of places that my mind immediately went to. But I wanted to focus myself on one idea as early as possible, and hope to have a story in mind by the end of the first day. So how did I do this? Well, I play a lot of video games, so I played a game. A word association game. I sat down and thought and scribbled what came to mind when I thought of the term liberation. I also looked at the definition of the word itself, which if you google it reads, the action of setting someone free from imprisonment, slavery or oppression, or release, and freedom from limits on thoughts or behaviour. This gave me a lot to work with, so I first wrote down a bunch of related words and what I associated them with. For example, when I think of salvation, I think of religious salvation, but also heroes, as in the salvation of humanity. From heroes, you've got superheroes in comics, but also emergency services, vigilantes, and so on. Now, my version is not pretty, and there are countless mind mapping tools out there, but for the sake of making notes for a time-sensitive project, this is what I did. Think of it like a warm-up for the creative process. You're making connections and thinking about what things can mean, and from there you'll probably eventually start to see the beginnings of an idea. I was very pleased with where my mind went while doing this exercise, so I definitely recommend it to anyone at the beginning of their idea process. From there, I thought of two ideas and whittled it down to my favourite one. You accidentally summon a demon and they chat with you and help you with your problems. Typically, in the media, demons want to escape or liberate themselves from hell, so that was the obvious layer. Then I wanted the demon to actually be the one liberating the player character from what they were worrying about, to give the game a second, deeper meaning. And is that what Brownies and Brimstone is about? Nope. Because I was in a team, when I pitched the idea to the others, they obviously had their own ideas about the theme and what I told them. We discussed it, and the game turned into a dating sim, where you can summon three demons with baking, and learn about them and yourself in the process, eventually possibly liberating one of them. So another lesson I learned? It doesn't matter how much you love your idea when you're in a team, because ultimately it's a group effort, and there needs to be compromise. If there are certain elements to your story that you want, then by all means fight for them, but flexibility will make the whole experience a lot more enjoyable for everyone and you might end up loving what's created as a result of everyone's input. I might use my original idea in a future project, but talking with the others and seeing them get excited about a story that was forming in our minds, and hearing their own flares and thoughts about it, 
was a really lovely moment in development and made me even more determined to finish the game and make it as fun as I could. The next stage was creating the characters. In Brownies and Brimstone, we decided to have three demon characters that you could interact with. And with this being a visual novel, it was important that they have plenty of personality and that each one was different. An added difficulty was that we had decided to explore the anti-trope optional diversifier, so I had to keep that in mind during the character creation process. I spent some time researching how other people recommended doing this part of the process, and what I found was quite overwhelming. Creating picture boards full of references, playlists a mile long, keywords upon keywords, it was just too much, especially with the restricted time frame. I'm sure this process is useful for some people, and possibly for longer projects, but for me, I just did what you can see on screen. A short description, almost like a character description in a character select screen, a couple of descriptive words, some pictures to help visualize what I had in mind for our artist to work from, and most importantly, what food summons them. Honestly, one of the best things I did during this process was to work closely with our artist, Ray. A character's personality is going to come through their visuals as well as their actions, and Ray's design skills gave me valuable insight into the different demons as their personalities developed. I'm so happy with how they came out, and I love seeing people getting to know Arakal, Lilith, and Tolganar. Then we come to writing the dialogue. As I mentioned, this game jam had a two-week deadline. So guess when I started writing everything? Yep, after a week had passed, so I had seven days to do it. Way to play on hard mode, Robin. I'm sure some of you will be able to relate to this, but I have a real problem with overthinking, and it just paralyzed me. I didn't want to let my teammates down, I didn't want my writing to be trash, I couldn't stop thinking what if I wasn't good enough, what if I couldn't finish everything in time, why did I think I'd be able to do this, and it just went on. It was really stressful. But I managed to pull through by doing something I'd never even considered. I broke what I needed to do down into the most minuscule pieces imaginable. It might sound super simple, but calming myself down long enough to actually consider this was an achievement for me, and it did end up working really well. Oh, I need to write dialogue trees for three different characters, which will all have different choices that need to branch? Well, screw that for now. We're meeting Arakal for the first time, and he's being cute. What happens now? Stuff like that. From there, with my dwindling time limit, I set myself the goal of writing at least two conversations a day, plus the intro and endings as and when I could, and I did it. Despite my self-doubt and anxiety, I pulled through with the help of framing it in this way. There's not much to say about the actual writing itself, because I just wrote words down as I thought of them. Everything in the game as it stands is at most a third draft, so while it won't be my best work ever, the work I put into framing the characters in my mind in the second step really helped me to find their voice and streamline the writing process. The important thing I realized at this stage, though, was the need to just get the ideas out of my head and onto paper, however that ended up looking. I just have to take the leap of faith and do it. As a wise man once said, just do it. So that was a bit long and rambly, but the main points I'd like to reiterate are as follows. Let your brain go wild with ideas at the beginning. Whether it's mind maps, doodles, tree diagrams, no idea is too weird or silly at this stage. Let the creativity just go. Don't be afraid to get other people's input on your ideas. Two heads are better than one, and it can be just a bit more fun. Take the time to visualize the characters involved in your story. Try to see them as real people you'd interact with, and imagine them in different scenarios. It'll help you out when writing, especially at crunch time. Break down what you need to do into teensy baby steps. Trust me, it helps. And most importantly, be kind to yourself. It's really easy to put yourself down or doubt yourself or compare yourself to other people, but you're already doing something awesome by putting yourself out there. It'd be so easy to not try, and yet here you are, trying to write or create in general. And that's honestly one of the coolest things you could be doing. So, you're officially cool to at least one person. And that's all I have to say for the moment. If you got this far, 
thank you so much for listening. I hope you got something out of this little spiel. If you're curious about Brownies and Brimstone, then feel free to go check it out on Itch. We're hoping to expand the game and create a post-jam version eventually, with more demons, more gameplay, and more terrible puns. So stay tuned for that. You can also find me personally online pretty much everywhere as Heckin Robin. I stream indie games on the regular, as well as other stuff, so my links are here too. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.